Hi and welcome, it's Monday and it's time for a total different type of art class with Vilna. So I took the plunge and I started to art journal and this is the art journals that I bought, a Strathmore journal and the paper weight is 190 grams or 90 pounds. So it's a nice thick paper which I absolutely love. And I'll show you how I'm going to prime my pages. I am just so excited to take the plunge. And I felt so giddy um, while I was still in the preparation part of it. All through the process, I absolutely, I don't know, it felt like I was on a high. It was so amazing. So I'm taking gesso. I'm using gesso. Let me call it gesso. Uh, golden and you can see it's quite um, liquid so I'm just scooping out a little bit on the page with a craft uh, craft stick and I'm just taking an old um, rewards card or a hotel card and you just want to spread it around and let me tell you that this works like a charm it's so amazing um, this is the way we used to do it uh, in art school and it just came back to me uh, well not doing art journaling but when we did uh, canvases even we used squidgies so this is just so amazing easy it makes a very thin application and um, and it coats it so evenly so I'm just a little careful around the edges I don't want the paint to spill over and ruin the edges of the book so I'm just a little careful. So I actually bought four of these journals. I bought them at Michael's and I'll have a link in the related products. Um, I bought four of them because I wanted to make four pages in one sitting or one day or two days uh, for the um, art journal videos. And I really want to upload like one video every week. But I decided to work one week and just create all four videos at once. Because in the end, it's a little easier to do this kind of work um, together. So if if my bangles and everything, my bracelets looks the same um, in every video, it's because I worked on everything simultaneously. And while one was drying, I was working on another one. And that's actually a very good idea. If you want to start art journaling, Maybe buy yourself two of these books. Now, back to the books. Um, one of these books, it's letter size. So it's eight and a half by 11. And um, it costs at Michael's around $44 for one. So it's quite expensive. So if you have a, a coupon, I got an after three o'clock coupon. So I bought all my supplies for 30% off, which is amazing. So I'm so thankful. And... I couldn't be more happy with the books. So once it's dry, you can you can see the paper didn't even make a dent. It's so smooth. It's so beautiful. Um, this works like a charm. So just prep your pages with a little gesso because in the end we are going to be using a lot of wet media on there, and you just want to protect it going through the pages. I'm just making sure that everything is 100% dry before I start working on it more. And, and so the journey begins, I guess. This is really the very first page that I started. So I'm going to post them over the next four weeks in order. Okay. So the one thing that I just want to show you or mention quickly is um, I created cut files for this page and then I used printables for the other pages and I decided rather than selling them one by one I'm going to bundle them up and put the four weeks worth of art journaling products that I created for my art journals that I thought maybe you'll like them I'm going to put them together in one bundle and this month's package is called Grace and you can buy it on iHeartStudio.ca for this month's products, there's six PDFs that you can download and print with a normal printer. 
And as you can see, this weird looking text um, on the screen, I did a mirror image of all of the images as well. Because in later lessons, we are going to be doing image transfer. And the nice thing about these products are you can you only need a normal printer that prints letter sized paper. Right, so let's get started with um, today's art journaling page. Like I said, I created a cut file and it's Psalm 18 because the thing is my journals, my art journals will definitely be more spiritual because they're so personal and I decided to make them prayer journals. So I'm going to be writing in them and it will be more on the line of prayers and and just deep thoughts. So I definitely wanted to take more of a spiritual angle and I mean if you want to do it obviously you don't have to do it that way but that's just what I decided to go this way for my art journaling. So I'm using the cut file as a stencil for this page and it's Psalm 18 which is a beautiful psalm. Um, I mean all of them are so beautiful but this one especially um, is so pretty and I'm going to be mixing those two pots some of it together so in one is uh, it's golden heavy heavy gel gloss and the other one is golden's lightweight of molding light molding paste so just a little bit of molding paste and heavy gel and even you can see the heavy gel is about double the amount of molding paste because I want it more of a transparent look, not as opaque. So if you want it pure white, you'll use the um, molding paste. But I want it to be a little bit transparent. So just hold it down and just scrape it over with um, your craft stick. And once you're done with your stencil, just place it on a newspaper and scrape it again. And that way you can put your stencil away and use it again. Because I'm definitely going to make my stencils once and I hope to use them more than once. You know, I think then it's worth it, the trouble that you had just um, making them in the silhouette. So I'm just going to... And this works like a charm every single time. I mean, just look at that. Just absolutely perfect. And now I have um, just place it down on a piece of newsprint and scrape it again. And it comes off super clean. And then I made another um, stencil also with my silhouette. And I used um, Canson watercolor paper to cut the stencils out. And I did a double cut. And I think if you um, if you watch my other videos, you'll know by now. I use Canson Excel watercolor paper, and I do a double cut with my silhouette. And now you just want to um, cover that as well. So when I do my art journals, what I'm thinking of the whole time is that I want to leave enough white space. You see, that should not happen. So make sure that everything is mixed before so that you can do everything in one fell swoop. You don't want to stop in the middle like I did there, even though luckily it worked out wonderful. But if you use a different kind of stencil, it might not work as well. So there you go. So I just wanted that. Um, it's almost like sunshine rays just spreading out. And you'll see later I'm going to place... Um, one of my cut files in the middle and that's that's the reason why I drew it actually to go around it anyway back to the white space so I wanted to leave enough room to actual write so that's why um, I noticed that mostly my designs will be centered either in the middle or around the edges so that's just an interesting observation um, and something to think about because you do want to leave some space to an actual journal. So now you just want to set this aside to dry completely. And it takes around 
30 minutes or 40 minutes and that's why if you have uh, two journals then at least you can work on two um, at the same time and now would be a good time to bring out the other one and to continue in that one so I had four so that kept me busy for quite a bit but I'm telling you if I had six that would have been even better so <laughs> I just absolutely love it I think I fell in love with art journaling I found my niche I think as a fine artist this is absolutely a phenomenal format to work in I am definitely definitely in love with this right so now this is dry and now the fun is going to start so first of all um, make sure that you have a little spray bottle just filled with plain water that's going to come in super handy and then I bought a pad of newsprint just to cover my um, surface in the end it didn't really work all that well because once I get working I forget sometimes just to put something behind but luckily all the sprays and things that I use comes off from my work surface with just a little bit of water and soap so that's fine so I'm using a Mr. Yui and this color is called pretty pink I think um, let me just see here um, pretty pink I, th I think it's that and then I you can see I sprayed with some plain water as well and now you just want to spray a little bit more so that it flows you can see the there you go just like that and I'll place it down because you don't want the water drops to go all the way to the edge um, and now I'm using um, a pink this is just spray paints that I have missed um, from scrapbooking and the pink is by October afternoon so that's how old some of my mists are and I'm sure that most scrapbookers have so many mists so you can use anything you want to just let it drop off a little bit um, And now just let it dry because once it was dry it looked absolutely beautiful and this was part of the I don't know winning formula um, for this layout was just the, the just by spraying those mists and letting it dry just like that so just be a little patient again that's why it's nice when you can work on more than one journal because while one is drying you can do another layout you know another page uh, in your art journal my, also my approach to art journaling I really want to take a minimalist approach I don't want to um, overwork pages even though you'll see in one of the weeks um, it did happen sometimes it just you just can't get it right the first time but with this one uh, look now it's dry I mean how pretty is that so this is a print and cut file or a printable that you can find on iHeart Studio and I made a layout uh, two weeks ago using these files and and this is what I had left over from the print and cut part and I just decided why not why can't I use it so I'm using a little Mod Podge and I'm going to just add it to my background page when I designed the cut file of this the rays let me call it sunshine rays I decided um, I placed that one and I drew around it so I actually made it for this I love you cut file so now I'm just using some Mod Podge and I'm just going to paste um, it down with the Mod Podge I love Mod Podge and in next week's video I'll show you how to do an image transfer and believe it or not I've never done it before and I just used Mod Podge and it worked perfect I mean no I, I won't say it worked perfectly um, but it, it worked wonderful I'm going to perfect the, this um, as I go on with my art journaling I'm sure I'll figure it out exactly how to do it but I must say I was pleasantly surprised and it opened a new world for me with 
printables if I can show you how to image transfer and that means that you can even um, print this um, design and do image transfer. The only thing with image transfers is that you have to print a mirror image. So this one has to be flipped over and then you can print it because when you lay it down it then um, then it will be good you know it will be the right side up um, it's hard to explain but I think you know what I mean <laughs> so I'll show you next week how to do the image transfer and it opened up a whole new world for me so let your Mod Podge dry again I think this is the big thing I think this is going to be a big thing with working with art journaling just my experience with mixed media and scrapbooking and in art um, has taught me one thing and that's that it's better when it's dry especially um, if you want a certain look then wait till your media is dry because th that way you keep your colors fresh and you keep it clean in a way not that clean is a major um, goal here but I don't know I don't like muted and dirty colors I like fresh colors that's just a personal preference and it's totally okay if you feel differently so now I'm using some acrylic paint I'm using um, parchment color that that gray almost like a beige gray and just white and and a little brush so I'm just brushing it and I'm not using it in an impasto um, way so I'm not using thick paint um, I'm just using it thinly as possible I love the Liquitex heavy body acrylics and I like it because it's not as liquid so that way you also um, apply some texture to your page without making it too bulky so I guess that's just nice so I'm just painting it I think the same principles will apply for me personally with our journaling as in with scrapbooking and that is to to not overdo it it's so easy just to keep on doing and carry on but just to make a statement um, or a decision point to yourself like and say this is enough you know so yeah so let the paint dry and now we're going to I'm going to take a leaf out of last video that I made for um, for my blog the scrapbooking video and we're going to color uh, the cut the printables with oil pastels and I got this little set uh, from Michaels and what I like about it is the oil pastels are a little smaller so they can work a little finer so this is very appealing to me I like this very much the fact that they are a little smaller so you get big ones and small ones and I would really um, suggest buying the small ones because of this just a simple thing that they a little smaller so you can work a little finer for them so let's color it it's basically the same thing that I showed you in the last video that I made and then once this is done we'll continue painting and drawing on our layout or I shouldn't say layout or our original page
right, and now I'm using an orange pastel and I'm just going to draw around again in a little circular motion um, around the little print and cut file or the little journaling box. So I'm thinking that that little journaling box is a wonderful way to write something special like a piece of scripture or something and then you can journal your thoughts on it around it or whatever you want to do or a quote or something inspirational. You can just see lightly. Um, just wanted to add a little bit of color. And now you can see how this page is coming together uh, already just a little bit. And again, I, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make things so complicated. My my aim always is with a video like this, for instance, is that if if you're someone that's never ever even thought of doing an art journal, I hope that when you look at this, you think, oh my goodness, I think I can do it. And when when that's the case, then I'm the happiest person on earth because that's exactly what I want. I want to um, have you do this with me. Um, and to show you it's not that difficult, you can literally do it step by step with me and create a layout that or a page that looks exactly like, like mine. So, or even nicer, you know? So, yeah, of course. So that's a gelato and I'm just misting it a tiny bit and then just using my hands to, to spread it over. So water is a wonderful thing. It's um, a very handy um, idea to have one or two of those little bottles. They're dollar fifty at a dollar store or Michael's, just filled with water. So that's that's a a very handy little tool for art journaling. Right, and I'm almost done. So now I'm just bringing out my color theory stamp pads and. Um, I just did a color theory class with Studio Calico and so I have all the colors and it's wonderful and I'm just going to ink the little edges with the gray one because I want to f create this finished look just to tie them in a little um, on one side and on the other side and, and I think then I'm going to be done. I don't want to overwork it. I love the happy accidents that happened on this original page just with the mist and a little bit of paint and pastels. So how simple, such a simple, simple page. And seriously, I think it will forever be one of my very favorites because it was my very first page. So I'm just ed inking the edge of um, the pages and you can see how the dark gray just ties them in together. And there you go, all done. These, um, the related products is on my blog and thank you so much for watching this very special little episode with me and I see, I'll see you next week. Bye bye.